Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here. And today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to show with you guys. This is the Paul Munko and Kaiser Mystic. Uh, it's got a little secret attribute here. It's not really a, uh, a secret um, because it lists it like directly on the listing, but the blade steel is Rex 45. I don't know about you guys. The only other um, knives that I can think of that have come in Rex 45 have been Spyderco knives. Now, I'm, I'm certain that it's not only Spyderco that's used Rex 45, but I can't think of any other ones. Um, it's also really surprising that you can get this steel on this knife uh, for $169. That is amazing. Even considering that Kaiser manufactures knives in China, um, we have, you know, really, really good overall fit and finish uh, and execution. And to get this type of steel on a knife at this price is really amazing. Um, I have some things I want to talk about, though, and we'll, we'll get to that. Thanks so much to Kaiser for sending this in for me to take a look at. It is available right now, so I'll link it right down below. You guys can check that out if you want to. It does help my channel when you use those links, but that's entirely up to you. Thanks to my patrons for supporting me, and please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. The overall length of the uh, Kaiser Mystic is coming in. It's a big boy, 8.75 inches overall blade length. 3.75, cutting edge three and a half. How about some size comparisons up against the Ontario Rat Model 1 and the Ontario Rat Model 2? You can see here, it's uh, it's big. It's bigger than the Rat 1, right? It's not, uh, not you know, cold steel Espada XL big, but it's, it's definitely big. How about up against the Demco AD 20.5? Definitely bigger there. How about up against the Spyderco PM2? Let's do some bigger stuff today. The Large Pyrite. There we go, and I don't know, maybe the the Ritter Hogue? That might be a good last one to do there. Alrighty. How's the action? Boy, the action is very good. It's just like the other Kaiser that this one came with. I think that was the, the Militaw. The action on these two Kaisers in particular seems to be very, very good. I don't know if that's an indication that Kaiser has changed how they do a lot of this stuff from the factory or if it just happens to be these two knives. But as you can see, the pivot action is extremely smooth. We have plenty of access to the lock bar. It is a little bit of a sharp ledge right here, but you do have plenty of access to it from the side. So I do like that. Uh, the thumb studs do not come to a peak, which is nice. It's very easy to reverse flick it. It's very easy to thumb flick it. The detent is tuned appropriately for um, these, you know, the thumb studs. Utilizing the front flipper, if that's what it's supposed to be, is a little bit trickier and it it's not really going to top flip. So, I don't know. This ledge, I don't think the jimping is quite jimpy enough. Um, or there needed to be a little bit more, you know, to get, get a hold of right here in order to overcome the detent. But the nice thing is you can just ignore that and use the thumb studs and that'll work just fine. Carry profile. Thickness up against the Spyderco Para 3. I think it's identical in thickness. Length and height up against the PM2 and Para 3 closed. We're looking at a little longer than the PM2, definitely longer than the Spyderco Para 3. Nowhere near as tall as either. Um, you'll notice it, that it's a, a, a bigger knife than, you know, what, what the average person carries, but it's definitely not, you know, so big that no one's ever going to carry it or that it's novelty. It's certainly on the larger side, but still well within the realm of normal for many people. Let's go ahead and do a hardware check. I'm going to get out my tools as per usual. My tools are very inexpensive and very recommendable. You can find them right down in the section of my description that talks about the tools I use on this channel or in the pinned comments. If you open up the comment section, it's right at the top uh, or the pinned comment. The, the uh, pivot is a T8. All these body screws are gonna be T6, including the lock bar insert screw. And then there's a hidden screw underneath for the pocket clip that will also be a T6. Uh, my guess is there's maybe one more screw right here holding in the backspacer. So there's three at least on each side plus the hidden pocket clip screw. Not a big deal. And same thing with the T6 screws. I wish it was T8, but it's not. As long as you got the right tools for the job and a place to put your hardware, you should be good to go. Materials, like I said, CPM Rex 45. Then we have, to my knowledge, titanium bolsters. Yep, and it's actually a faux bolster. I mean, this is all part of the frame. Then we have micarta scales here, titanium clip, and titanium 
backspacer. I'm gonna guess this weighs close to five ounces. Yeah, four and a half. Is it well let's try again with it all the way on the scale. Yeah, four four point four four ounces. Um, not quite perfect ratios with blade length, but still very, very good. And the balance is right behind the pivot there. So it really doesn't feel all that crazy. Not bad. Let's go ahead and measure blade stock thickness. Um, blade stock thickness here is going to come in at 115,000. So not super duper thick. Okay. Meat and potatoes time. Let's talk about Rex 45. So I, I actually got to test Rex 45 thoroughly with a Spyderco sham in a while back. Wow, uh, that stuff is insane. Um, I read somewhere, and I don't know if this is true. I gotta say this before I say something because people always assume that I am claiming to be some sort of professional or metallurgist. If you don't know, I am nowhere near <laughs> what someone would call a professional when it comes to metallurgy. I'm also not uh, anywhere near uh, what you might consider to be a professional when it comes to testing blades and blade geometry and blah, blah, blah. I am a design reviewer. I like to review the design, the overall execution and quality of the build, things like that. But it, when it comes to um, the blade and, and you know, determining uh, the quality of the heat treat, things like that, I don't have the proper equipment to do it, um, at, nor do I have the time or means to test any you know, blade geometry, any composition in a wide enough variety of ways to come to a definitive conclusion. I will remind people that very, very few people on the planet can actually do that, right? Um, it's, it's very difficult. Even the people who can do it, there are so many variables, it's really hard to come to a, you know, sort of conclusive uh, conclusion. <laughs> um, but I just want to make that clear. So a lot of what I'm going to tell you is based on what I have read and a little tiny bit it comes from actual experience. That experience comes from what I assume to be a properly heat treated Spyderco Shaman from back when they did the sprint runs in Rex 45. I read, now that thing held up super well. There's actually an old Instagram post that should still be there on my Instagram that shows a massive pile of cardboard that I broke down over the course of about an hour and a half. I had a ton of boxes Broke it down over the course of an hour and a half. And man, that that shaman really shrugged off, um, you know, that cardboard. No problem. I don't I don't think this, the shaman geometry really perfectly accentuates the maximum capability of Rex 45. Um, but that's what I used. And it's still no problem. I read somewhere that Rex 45 at 65 Rockwell Hardness has the same toughness as S90V at 58. Now, S90V at 58, I don't think is necessarily like massively tough, but I certainly, I, I would imagine tough enough because S90V at higher hardnesses, uh, for most people who are using it appropriately, is that's plenty of toughness for S90V to do what it needs to do. So I thought that sounded pretty impressive. But again, I have no way to test that or say if, if that really is impressive, right? I'm just trying to be honest here. Um, so, uh, the reason I'm telling you this is um, Rex 45 has the potential to be very, very good. Um, extremely tough, I mean, in terms of like the balance with its potential edge retention, right? Um, that, that's really what we're getting at here, if it's heat treated appropriately. I, I know that Rex uh, 45 has a much higher optimal range than, say, M390. So the question is, does this $170 Rex 45 blade actually come in at the appropriate heat treat. I don't know. Um, I took this thing out and used it pretty just how I normally use any other knife, right? And usually if it's a bad heat treat, the, the indicator is it loses its razor sharpness extremely fast, right? Or it just becomes dull extremely fast. Then you know that it's, you know, nothing, I mean, other than bottom of the barrel steel should lose their edge that quickly. And I can confidently say not only did it not lose its edge, it didn't really react at all, right? So I have to assume, just based on minimal, I'm talking over a couple of days just doing minor things with a little bit of cardboard here and there, stuff like that. I have to assume it's at least treated okay, but that, then again, that's not really enough there. So I, I looked on Kaiser's website, and Kaiser, listen, you guys gotta put your Rockwell hardness range on there. If you're gonna use steel like this, tell us where you're getting it. You have to tell us. You can't just be like, oh, sparkly, Rex 45. I'm, I mean, I'm cracking jokes here. I like Kaiser, and they do a good job. But 
people want to know. The people who are paying us much money for knives, we, we want to know, right? Whether or not we intend to take it out and use it and push it to the limit, that's our business, right? But if before we pay for it, we, we still, we, we would like to know, right? We shouldn't have to wait for somebody who has like, you know, all the time in the world to test it a million different ways and get the exact composition and be able to read the exact Rockwell hardness. You know, we shouldn't have to wait for somebody to do that, you know, <laughs> You should just be able to tell us. Um, so it'd be nice to know. I think it's really cool that we have Rex 45 on here. And even if we are a point under where everybody in the whole world thinks it should be optimal, right? Let me take, for example, M390. Everybody's hitting it at 59 to 61. But if you ask the average well-informed knife enthusiast, we'll say it should be 60 to 62. Let's say Rex for this Rex 45 falls a point below. All right. Well, at 170 bucks, I think most people find that excusable, right? Um, but I'd still like to know. So does it seem like this is mushy? No. Do I have any idea if it will actually perform as an, uh, you know, the same as an optimally heat treated Rex 45 blade? I have no idea. So you guys need to know that for me. I don't have the ability to test that, but I would really like it if Kaiser would let us know. On to the design. Um, I do like how this looks. Uh, it does look just enough different that we will remember it. It's not another folding steak knife design. It's not another tiny knife, which is great, right? I do like this sort of large, swoopy, it's not quite a harpoon, right? But it's not quite like a, a you know, an orthodox uh, clip point, right? I like the uh, complement, uh, the the uh, the way that the thumb position, at least when you rest your thumb on the on the blade, how it complements the index finger position. You can also choke up, which is nice right here. You can also just keep your thumb on the thumb ramp, right? It's all right. The ergonomics are just that; they're all right. There's some areas that feel a little bit almost like maybe it's not so perfectly molded to my hand. But then again, I'm not, you know, sliding up and down. It's kind of the same thing. I'm not perfectly comfortable in any spot. And the edges are a little bit abrupt. Not really sharp, just a little bit abrupt. And then it's flat right here instead of being contoured, which I think would have helped a little bit. There's nothing bad here. There's just nothing like, oh my gosh, hand melting, right? It does have Kaiser's typical, very, very beautiful stonewashed finish. That sort of high reflectivity tumbled finish that looks really great. Contrasting with a blasted uh, frame here. I like the micarta pivot color. I like the uh, just sort of the flat micarta on this. I think it looks fine. I, I would have liked to see it in a, like a black or a gray micarta or even like a forest green micarta. It would have looked nice. I'm, I'm actually unsure if there are different versions or different um, variations of this. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me if there were. Um, but it looks very good. If this is the only configuration, this it, it looks very good in this configuration. The edges up here are nicely knocked down, which is definitely a, a product of the tumbling. We have a nice swedge up here. Comes down to a pretty, pretty thin edge, right? The edge is definitely well sharpened and the bevels are even on both sides. The flat carries out about 80, nah, not 80, 70% the length of the blade. Um, overall, I mean, I like the the... Uh, the length of the blade, the look of the blade. I just like that we have a larger knife. The knife also feels very completed, right? Kaiser's overall fit and finish has only gotten better uh, as the years have progressed. And this really feels like some of their best work yet outside of a couple of sharp edges in the overall execution. There's no like, you know, uneven bevels. There's no like weirdness or wonkiness. There's no, you know, transition from titanium to pivot color to pivot head is not wonky. Transition from titanium to micarta scale is not wonky, right? It used to be every now and then you'd see something like that from Kaiser, but not, not so much. We're also not looking at a mushy detent. It's a nice clicky detent. I like that. Moving on here, there's not a whole lot else going on, right? Outside of the more unique profile of the knife, and I say more unique versus a lot of the copy and paste or rinse and repeat styles that we get now in 2023. This is a little bit different, and I would expect nothing less from Paul Munko, um, you know, given that he is an artist. I mean, he's not going to just create the same type of manufactured stuff that we I understand this is a manufactured knife I'm just saying of course his designs would have a little bit more style and a little bit more personality than what we typically see so I appreciate that uh backspacer has a um lanyard bar in it so lanyard people rejoice no slot for lefties though that's a bummer we should have you know it would have been nice to have a, a clip that you know a mounting position and a clip that would work for lefties so sorry lefties we have, um, I really appreciate that this is actually underneath the scale. That means you don't have to search for the optimal position with your fingers over here, meaning not putting pressure on the lock bar so as to not create an impossible thumb flip scenario. No, you can just rest your fingers on 
The micarta, which creates no additional or unnecessary pressure on the lock bar, and you can just flip it. That's great. We have a stop pin that is internal and attached to the blade, so it runs on channels on either side of the titanium. A little bit of increased stability while maintaining smoothness on lockout. And speaking of lockout, it is absolutely solid. No blade play up, down, left, or right. No lock stick, no double clutch, no pivot lash. Extremely, one of the smoothest knives I've ever felt from Kaiser. Extremely smooth. Very nice clicky detent and perfect centering. That's great. No uh, detent lash either. This is cool. It's a cool knife. Had it been an S35EN, I think it would have been like, hey, something a little bit different. And then maybe would have flown under the radar for a lot of people. This won't though. This is in Rex 45. As it sits, I think I can easily recommend it just based on that, like, on paper materials. But I have to stress this. Uh, I don't know, again, what the hardness is. And for this to really be the value that it seems, right, we can't advertise the horsepower and then have the car underperform. huh? Nobody wants to see that. So number one, Kaiser, at least on your website, start posting the ranges, for your Rockwell hardness. Start start letting people know. You cannot hit this stuff at the... It seems like a lot of steels... A lot of companies are like, yeah, 5961. Sure, doesn't matter. 1095, 5961. ZDP, 5961. M390, 5961. It's not a, a one-size-fits-all kind of thing. I feel like a lot of companies are doing that, and then it's easier to just hide it and be like, but they look at the steel. Huh? The steel's not... No, we need to know the range. Every steel, every composition has a different optimal range. And again, whether or not the end user actually is going to take it out and push it to the limits, right? The freaking casual weekend <laughs> critics out there pointing that out. <laughs> that's easy. That's lazy. Doesn't matter. It should, it should have the performance, even if only 2%. Of the people buying it are actually going to take it out and push it to the limit. It should have that potential for performance. And if it doesn't, we deserve to know. It does either way. We deserve to know whether it does or doesn't. We need to know. Kaiser, you got to put that on the website. If it actually ends up being at or very close to the optimal range, this is the deal of a lifetime. It's really good stuff at 169 bucks. So I'm going to say recommendable pending the Rockwell hardness. Uh, cool design though, for sure. So for the time being, I will put it on my most recommended knives playlist and I will link it right down below. That's going to be it today, guys. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do of course have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like. So check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that metal complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching everybody and have a great day.